Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question was <coughs> Frederick, is it necessary to test JavaScript UI code and how do we do it? So let's get into it. Well, it depends a little bit on your setup, but I'm going to assume that you most likely use something along the lines of say React or Angular or something of this nature. It's uh, fairly uncommon in older applications where you used to use jQuery and just vanilla JavaScript to do UI testing. This idea of making things a little bit more serious and, well, getting more serious about the UI layer of application development is really only in fairly recent time, well, when that came around and became a thing. But basically, if, the, if it's necessary or not, it comes down to, at least in my opinion, the sort of thing you, that you are making. I'll give you a few, like a, an example of this. So, in React Land, as an example, there is a trend where people have this notion of creating these components, and each of these components, in turn, can be tested, UI tested, and be ran as any other unit test. The way we usually do this is that we have a library, either React, depend well, it used to be Enzyme, but today you don't necessarily need Enzyme, but you can still use it, where basically what you do is you convert your JSX component or like your React component into executable code, you ra run that and then you can simulate within your test suite different interactions. So let's say that you have a button as an example and you have the on click method handler, then maybe you want to make sure that if you click that button, the intended function is actually executed. Usually things are a little bit more tricky than that, but that's a base case. And then you have other things that you can assert where you can do something we call snapshot testing. Now, snap, uh, snapshot testing is basically the idea that you render out the corresponding HTML that is going to be produced once the component is actually in the browser. And then you take a snapshot when you're happy with that, that sh of that HTML. And then you have a small cache in your code or in your repository and you compare that. So every time the tests run, you re-render that component and you expect it to look the same way as it did when you took the snapshot. That's another way of testing. Now there are benefits and there are limitations to these approaches, but these are the common ways. So the issue with this is that if you want to do this like in a true TDD fashion, there are, in my opinion, two problems. Number one is that it's very, very, very costly. The reason why it's very costly is because usually you don't have... Well... If you do this for big components, I mean, a button is a simple thing to handle, but if you have an entire page component or you have... Like, it depends on how you structure your components. I mean, really, really large components can become really, really complicated. And your tests will... Well, depends on your on your viewpoint, but it's very likely that you're not going to, you're going to spend a lot of time maintaining these tests. And that might be perfect for you, depending on the component. But I will also argue that there are certain components where the unit tests themselves aren't really necessary because there are more valuable tests that you can use to ver validate that something is working, in, working in, a, in a proper way. I'll touch on that as well. But th that is the basic idea anyway. And the other, limitation to this, which you can't capture really with unit tests, is that when you are using UI component, there is another dimension to testing, and that is what we call CSS or styles. You see, what you're trying, a test is designed to assert that a specific piece of functionality is working as intended. Now, if you're just using code, like a function or something, it's actually fairly easy for you to write a test that validates that this is executing correctly because there is no visual component involved in just software running in a computer. But when it comes to UI components, there is a visual element. So how do you, how do you write a test that asserts that a component looks correct? Like that it has the visual, uh, visual correctness. What's even trickier is if you put that component into another component or a larger page component of some sort, how do you validate that? 
that is something that gets very tricky and the industry has ideas of how to do this they are by no means perfect you can do pixel like take with much the most common one is that you take snapshots of how the component should look as an image and you do do pixel comparison but that's not really that's not it's not a very good stra like it's the best one we have but it's not really ideal so that is the limitations of writing unit tests. So if you ask me, I will argue that writing unit tests is something that you should do for base components. In other words, if you have components that you create in order as a part of a library or something like that, that other parties are going to consume or that they are going to make up the, well, in design terms, the atoms of your design, those are very useful to unit, to unit tests because they are going to be scattered all across the entire application. But a lot of components are one-off solutions where you simply have a component that represents a specific entity within your entire, you know, in your application. So those sorts of tests, I will argue, should be covered by end-to-end -end tests where you basically spin up an instance of the application and then you write a test that simulates a user going through a specific flow. And the reason why I argue this is because when you do that, you're actually running the application as it's intended to be used. And you can do other things apart from just validating that, hey, something is actually, if you click it, it actually behaves correctly. You can, in that scenario, also validate that the layout looks correct with pixel comparison or similar UI tests. And I will argue that these things are a little bit more valuable because if you add to the fact that when you release stuff, you're actually checking whether or not something is working before you ship it out into production, you're going to be fairly set. And it will reduce a lot of the maintenance that come with writing tests for really, really large applications, uh, really large components. So that is just my thinking on it. And Usually UI testing is a lot easier when you do it with a framework like React or Angular or something like that. It's a lot rarer that people do it with vanilla JavaScript, but you can do that as well. So what I want you to take away from this is that UI testing components or unit testing UI components is some, it's absolutely a thing. The, it's fairly common that people do it to some extent. They are not usually, in my experience, as good at it as we are with doing test-driven development on the server, but it is absolutely a thing. I suggest that the pragmatic approach to doing this correctly is to use your base components, buttons, lists, like the, smaller, like the smallest components that, that are usually used across the entire application. Test those fairly well, because that's going to be a lot of value for you, because they need to work in a lot of different contexts, but for the big components like page components or sections of a page that only really exist on one single page, it's a better, in my world, uh, solution to have these end-to-end -end tests because those you pretty mu you're pretty much going to get a lot more value from doing it that way. That's just my personal opinion, but hey, that's how it is. Have a great day.